<laughs> a little flustered, but I'm okay. How are oh, you? I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> I I didn't get your text that you were two minutes late, and so I started the live, and and but that's all good. So yeah, all welcome, good. welcome to tap into your creativity. I'm so excited. Woo! Sorry, I'm having. <laughs> problems my phone was like nope sorry <laughs> that's okay you're all good um I can I can see you in the bottom of your beautiful big painting so I'm good Thanks. <laughs> welcome take a deep breath we're so excited that you're here today in tapping to your creativity uh you are better known as Addie B you're an award winner artist you are an abstract contemporary artist uh, you're an Air Force um, veteran, which is unbelievable. Thank you so much for your service. Um, and I just want to say just thank you for trusting me and coming into this program and coming into this incredible army of artists. And um, so just tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Sure. Well, first, I just want to say thank you for having me. Um, I appreciate the invitation to come in and to um, join this effort. Um, I think what you're doing is amazing. Um, so, you know, again, thank you for welcoming me. Um, I'm happy to be here. Um, let's see, where should I start? I'm 38 years old, uh, mother of three, uh, like you said, Air Force veteran. Um, I started pursuing visual art as like a second career full time in 2015. Um, I started painting in 2012. Um, I did not consider myself a visual artist. I'd always thought of myself as a creative, um, definitely, um, but more of a writer. And I had done a lot of performance based art uh, growing up. So I was completely new. Um, to visual art. It wasn't something that I thought was a part of my creative voice. Um, but, you know, I started uh, painting as a way to um, have something constructive to do with my hands at the recommendation of a therapist. And um, that's really, that was my introduction um, into painting and into creating um, visual art. It was really just something that was part of my, my therapy. So let's um, let's pause there for a minute. Where do you live and where do you work? I live right outside of Philadelphia um, in South Jersey, and I work here inside my home. My studio is here in my house. So take us back um, on your childhood years. Were you always from outside Philly? Did you stay there? Um, take us like no. when you're back to your childhood years. Yeah, I was originally born in San Antonio, Texas, so I'm a native Texan. I'm a military brat, so I grew up all over the Southwest um, and Alaska. No wonder so, why you joined the Air Force. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, my parents were in the Air Force. Um, both my, my biological father, my mother, and my stepfather were all in the Air Force. Wow. Um, and um, Thank you, you all know, so I, for your service. That's incredible that... Were you moving around? Were they moving around a lot? Yeah, so my mom and my stepdad only served uh, four years. And then they um, they are originally from Philadelphia. Okay. And they went back. Um, they wound up going back to Philadelphia. My father, though, he stayed in. And um, I grew up with him. Uh, my parents divorced, and I grew up with him. And, um, yeah, we traveled all over the Southwest. He was stationed um, in Alaska uh, when I was very young and then New Mexico and then back in Texas. Uh, but then in between that, um, my father, one of his hobbies was showing dogs. <laughs> and so we literally traveled all over the Southwest, like Arizona, California, Colorado, um, Nevada, different parts of Texas. Um, New Mexico, just kind of all over going to different dog shows and participating and stuff like that. So um, I spent a lot of time uh, staring out the window and staring at, you know, the landscapes, the different landscapes. And um, really just I feel very, very connected um, to the Southwest. It's a huge influence on me during my formative years. Um, and that's been coming back up more um, in my most recent um, Painting. 
has was it hard for you to make connections because you had to move that much um because i was going to school mostly with other like on base with other military kids um i was all you know i was pretty much going to school with other kids who also moved around a lot so um i didn't really have that much of a of a problem with it um i actually enjoyed moving uh we moved about every four and a half to five years okay um yeah so it was actually something that i i kind of looked forward to i enjoyed it wasn't like a um a traumatic thing for me like i really got a kick out of uh going to a new place immersing myself you know in a new environment being around new people um i found it pretty exciting as a kid So when you decided to join the Air Force was art part of your world at that time? No. Um I would say the only bits of art that were a part of my world back then were um writing and poetry and I had just been introduced although I didn't know it um I didn't know it by this name back then but I had just been introduced to art journaling. um and to kind of like using a sketchbook and so back then my the the art journal that i had um it featured like a lot of collage so i collected uh, a lot of music so like a lot of cd's um and so i had i saved all the liner notes from all the cd's that i i had <laughs> and so i used those to cut out different um either words or images that um appealed to me and I would integrate that into whatever I was writing into my journal um so but that was pretty much the extent of it um I had a friend back then a really close friend who uh was a student uh she was going to art school she was a student and she had shown me some of her journals and her sketchbooks and they included i mean there was paint in there there were she had stitched some pages together um i mean her her books were like brand new worlds to me and um that was kind of my introduction um into art journaling into sketchbooks but for my own self i only took it as far as cutting some things out and just doing some very basic type of collage yeah And while you were in the Air Force, were you able to do any of that or not really? How long were you in there for? Uh not I mean I wasn't really able to do much because most of my time revolved around work. I did shift work. Um so I was working 8 to 12 hour shifts, which really are like 10 to 14 hour shifts. Oh my god. Um so <laughs> four years um I actually was a security forces member, so that's their version of police. Okay. Um so I did that for four years and like I said the work was pretty all consuming. Um even, you know, on days off we had mandatory trainings and stuff like that. So I wasn't really um engaged in um anything creative really. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. unless it was maybe experimenting as much as I could um with my hair or um maybe you know decorating <laughs> Um, that was kind of pretty much the extent of any creative expression or outlets that I had. It was pretty much all about, you know, I was sucked into military life. So, so right after that, then take us what happened? Where are you at this point? And and did you have to move? And how did you start getting back into your poetry and your artwork, really? Um so after I separated from the military uh I was a single mom I was about six months pregnant um and I I would say the first two and a half to three years um after I separated from the military in 2006 uh my first son was born in February 2007 uh that period of my life was really about trying to transition back into civilian life um gain my footing, uh find employment, uh take care of my son. Um, you know, so it was a very difficult uh dark period in my life. I'm sure. Um, yeah. yeah. I wound up moving uh back up here to New Jersey where my mom and my stepdad were. Uh moved back in with them uh for a couple of years and, you know, just really kind of reestablished my life and I got I 
got back into school. I started going to community college. I uh, started working a job, um, met my now husband um, in like 2008. Um, and I'd say maybe like a year and a half or so later, uh, we started dating. I got pregnant again. I had my, um, my middle son who is now going to get ready to be 11. Um, and it was after I gave birth to him and after, um, I went through, um, a pretty debilitating, um, experience with postpartum depression and anxiety, um, that I started seeking mental health treatment. And that eventually led to me being diagnosed with bipolar disorder. And it was while I was trying to, my care team and I were trying to, you know, kind of put together a treatment plan um, for bipolar disorder, you know, that involved meds and therapy, um, that I pretty much started trying to re-engage uh, my creative voice um, outside of just writing. And so by that point I had started blogging. So this was like in 2010, 2011, I had started blogging about my mental health experiences. Um, and while in therapy, uh, my therapist had suggested I find something, um, constructive to do with my hands. And she had explained to me all the data and science behind the benefits of working with your hands and making something creative. And so I, did very distinctly remember I left that therapy appointment and I had my kids with me and I went to Walmart and I was looking for, um, for yarn and hooks. Cause I re I had remembered that as a kid for Christmas one year, I'd gotten those little, you know, those rainbow looms yes. where you can, yes. you know, I loved you it. Yarn. Yes. Yeah. and you went like um, this, right? Like you hooked it and then you went right. like, yes. Yeah, pulled it, pulled it, pulled it, it in. It yeah. off the loop, loved it. Right? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so I had gotten one of those for Christmas, and so I had that memory, and I was like, "Oh, you know what? I'll try to do that again," because that was kind of the only thing I could think of. Um, so I went to Walmart looking for yarn and hooks, and on my way to the yarn section, I passed this section uh, where they had all these really cheap craft paints. And it was literally just like a very, very fleeting thought. It was like, grab some. And I just did. I didn't really think much about it. Um, I just scooped a whole bunch of stuff, tossed it in my cart, and kind of just kept moving. And I tried to crochet and knit and weave for about two weeks, and I got very frustrated with it. It was too tedious for me. Um, and I was just like, this is, this is ridiculous. This is not going to work. Um, and I had a weekend off where um, I was not doing very well mentally. And um, I saw in the corner of my room all like the, the brushes and the paints and like the really cheap, thin particle boards that I had kind of stashed over in the corner that I'd gotten at the store. And uh, I was like, well, you know, I might as well try to take my therapist's advice and give this a try. The yarn stuff didn't work maybe this will work. And so I pulled out the paints and the brushes and I literally just spent about 45 minutes just kind of pushing paint around um, on the surface of this one little particle board. board. And I noticed after about 45, 50 minutes that like I had calmed down, my thoughts weren't ruminating. Um, Physically, I didn't feel all the pressure and the angst that I had been experiencing previously. Um, my mind was much, much quieter. And, you know, that, that, um, the sensory input, that tactile input from, you know, feeling the paint on my hands was very soothing to me. And that was literally how I started painting. Um, and that was my introduction into, um, into painting, but into also this new aspect of my creative voice that I didn't realize was there. Yeah. Um, and I, I it, think that know, because really... you have been so open about your process and you've helped so many people that have mental health issues and they're not so open because either they're afraid or they think they're alone. Yeah. And it can be a very paralyzing um, thing as you well known. And so 
part of why I started this project was also to help people at home because with the pandemic when it hit, you know, people were mm-hmm. paralyzed at home and they just didn't know how to move. And my only way of trying to heal and myself and to help others was by creating. And so I do believe that art heals in a way that it's very hard to explain until you get into it, right? Yep. (laughs) It's very hard (laughs) to explain until you start doing it for yourself. And then you're like, oh, wait. And maybe for other people, it's not paint. Maybe it is crochet or weaving, or maybe for other people, it's, you know, movement, it's dance, it's, um, or maybe it's writing. Like I always tell people who say, oh, I'm not an artist or, oh, I'm not a, I'm not creative. I always tell them, yes, you are. You just haven't found what fits for you, but everybody, I believe, finds something that works for them. Um, and once they engage in it, it's like, ah, this is it. It's um, it's so and, freeing and it's so, yeah. you know, it just, you just have to try it, right? The moment that you take yeah. that step for whatever creative channel you choose to be a part of, all of a sudden, everything starts to open up. Your pores is in your, in your body start to open up and you're ready to receive all of that. And so it's like a two-way street that just happens very organically. Mm-hmm, most definitely. Yeah. So, um, so now tell us about, okay, so now you're 2015 ish when you really start to think, okay, I have a career now I can really maybe push here and, um, start being a champion for others and start writing and start, you know, being a part of a a bigger part of, um, the art world. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, You know, like I said, I originally had started painting purely for like therapeutic purposes. Um, I hadn't thought about it, uh, you know, being a career or anything that, you know, would take me to where I am now. Um, But the more I started doing it and the more that I found it um, to be really an extension of uh, even my writing practice, um, I really wanted to pursue it um, because I felt like it was a medium that I could uh, experience more freedom, more creative freedom in. And um, I also wanted to have a career for myself that was flexible because I was, you know, at this point I was a stay at home mom. I had three children. um, So I wanted to find, you know, something that was flexible um, that I could, you know, stay at home and take care of my kids who are all neurodivergent um, and also, you know, engage in something that I was passionate about. Right. Um, So I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be an artist. I'm going to be a working (laughs) artist. Um, Not really knowing what that meant um, or what that could mean, um, especially for myself. So, you know, I really just started by submitting my work to all different types of, you know, if it was a call for art, uh, if it was a call for artists for like a, a program, emerging artist program, or if it was for, you know, a publication, I just really started putting my, my work out there. And I started sharing here on Instagram, um, more and more of my art and my process. And, um, you know, I think I, I think by 2017, I had submitted my, I had submitted my work like over 200 times or something like that. Um, I, <laughs> yeah, people I ask, a lot. how do you, how do you get there? Right. And it's by working really right. hard and by showing up and by doing things and by, yeah. you know, and, but also knowing when to step back. Yeah. When to step back and just kind of say, okay, you know, maybe after, you know, I can't remember what number rejection it was, but I was kind of just like, okay, what am I doing? What am I trying to get out of this process? Exactly. What, you know, what do I want my art career to look like? Right. What does success, mean to me you know like I it was just like a I had like a gut check moment where I was able to really start evaluating what I wanted um what I what purpose my art I felt like my art serves um and how can I best serve that you know how can I how how can I help my art do what it's here to do right what does that look like um is that gallery representation is that exhibitions is that just selling my art on Instagram like what it, you know I had to ask myself what do I want um 
and I got I had gotten one rejection that hit me harder than I thought it would. And um, out of that experience, I decided that I didn't want to have to rely on um, an institution or a gallery or um, really anybody. Um, I think the benefit to being married to someone like my husband, who uh, is an entrepreneur at heart, um, he grew up, his family owned a bodega. Um, so he's nice. literally kind of worked for himself most of his life. Um, the benefit of that, of being around that type of energy and that type of person is you start to, especially in today's landscape, you start to kind of realize, okay, maybe I don't need the middleman. Maybe I don't necessarily need somebody else to make this happen for me. Um, and so I started thinking about, you know, that's what the if key, I open that's the key word for me. Because for, me. for you, right, it works this way. Right. For others, right. being in galleries or being accepted in institutions, that's their thing. So the great thing about art is that everything is validated if you're okay with it. I think that's the right. most important thing. You need to be okay with the decisions that you're taking for yourself and not compared to right. others. But really, really, like, dig in and say, what do I want? Mm -hmm. And also to recognizing that um, what you want can change. Right. right? And, and it's okay. You know, like, it's okay. Like it's, there's a, you know, like I, back then, you know, I'd said, you know, I want to, I don't want to have to rely on another entity to get my work um, for, for people to see my work and to come and see it in person and to experience it for themselves. Right. And so it was like, okay, well, I'm going to open up my own space and I'm going to create a space for other artists like myself who don't necessarily have other access and opportunities that, you know, um, other artists who are in art school or other artists who, um, you know, have, have the ability to get into galleries or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I wanted to, create a space for self-taught artists, create a space for black and brown women, abstractionists, especially. Um, and so I did that, I, you know, and, and, you know, that. And it's incredible. In. You started that in 2018, I believe, right? In 20. Yes. Yeah. In 28. Um, and it's, it's, it's growing into its own thing that I'm very proud of and grateful for. Um, but then even after that, after, you know, the last two years, two years of doing that, I had to, again, kind of come back and be like, okay, I'm doing this thing. I've been able to channel all my passion for advocacy and community and serving others into this, this thing that's growing and starting to thrive and become its own thing. But what, as an artist myself, what do I want? You know, what does, you know, what, what does my art career look like? And so again, I had to have another conversation with myself and be like, okay, you know what, maybe now I do want to show my work in galleries, but what type of galleries and what type of, you know, relationships do I want to have with galleries or with other institutions? And what type of shows do I want my work to be in? Um, you know, uh, what type of public spaces do I want my art to be in? So again, just coming back to that point that what you want and um, how you want to present your art to the world, it's a, it can be a very fluid thing. It can change, right, from season to season. It's 100%. Not and your story changes. Your life changes. History happens. You know, we've, we're living it, in, in, in times that, I mean, we've had master's degrees in, in less than a year of what can happen in history as, as we go every five minutes, it's fluid, it's changing. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. I mean, if you don't adjust and pivot to the moment, then you're left behind. You really are. Right. And, and you right. just need, exactly. you know, it's, it's very important that you continue to be fluid and continue to change and continue to absorb and learn and listen, because that is the only way that we can move forward. Yeah, most definitely. So most I'm definitely. so excited because now we're going to, you're going to take us a little bit around your studio space and show us your beautiful artwork. And we're going to talk about um, that. And you're going to show us what you created for um, 
uh, yes. for tap into your creativity, which I'm so excited. It will be for sale today. So <laughs> if you're interested in buying it, you're going to DM either Addie B or myself, and we'll let you know mm -hmm. once um, Addie B shows us. So go ahead. I'm so excited. Sure. Okay, so let me stand up here. Um, it's not as messy as it was. Um, oh, you should have left it messy. Everybody's messy. <laughs> <laughs> well, once my once it gets to the point that I can't walk in, that's when I like clean up enough, and then I kind of make more of a mess. Um, so I'll flip this around, and Perfect. I'll show you. So this is uh, my art cart, kind of where I keep. A lot of stuff and then I have these two um, storage shelving things um, that I actually just got over the summer um, they're and, amazing I bought them at Costco yeah I got these at Target and they just they work so well to store paints I've yes, got my little amazing. crafty things up there I've got um, I collect a lot of different types of paper and materials um, I've got some house paint down there that I use, gesso. Um, that's all just like junk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, this is my most recent haul of um, house paint samples. Oh, um, that I'll nice. Use, what what uh, brand do you use? I really like Sherwin Williams. Okay. Um, I like their I like their the colors that they have. Um, so there's. Do my... you use the the matte ones or? Yeah, I'll use the matte ones. Um, yeah. And, you know, usually the samples work pretty well. Yeah, um, they do. Especially they actually for do. underpaintings. Especially for underpaintings. That's what I was going to yep. say. Yep. Yeah. And especially as I've been working larger, um, yeah. I've just found it easier to use. To cover. Um, yeah, house paint for, sure. for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then this is the other shelf that ha where I store. Um, I started working on a unstretched canvas a lot more. And so I, you know, this is where I kind of store everything that I roll up. And, See, I use um, stretch also... canvas too, because I like that you can really push and pull into the, into it without having that uh, bounce back. Why do you do it? Yeah. Just for storage or, or. Uh, well, yeah, one for space. Um, two, I also just like being able to handle the canvas. Um, yeah. and also, you know, it's also just cheaper to ship. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's, it <is. laughs> it's much cheaper to ship and for the client to take it to a framer and, you know, kind of go through that process. Um, but yeah, I, and also too, it just allows me to work much bigger. Yeah. For sure. Um, I've been, I've been moving in that direction. And so, um, this is a very good way for me to kind of keep that organized um and then i have over here um i've been doing a lot with dried paint skin and so i have different containers where i just kind of pour paint in and then just let it dry and then i'll pull it off and play around with it um i also have like plastic here that i use that for um and different um these little plastic mats that as you can see like there's just lots of dried paint and so i'll just spend time like scraping it off yeah, I, um, I it's, that's so funny, it. Addie B, because I have done that too. And then you can reuse that. Uh, you, if you water that, you can use it as a crayon. Right. Yeah, it's really, really fun. So like over here, I have, um, I have some scraps that I'm actually hoping to use in a couple of pieces. Um, yeah, I love that. And like this yeah, I piece that. I have here that actually is a uh, a combination of dried paint skin and um, flat acrylic. Yeah, the texture uh, is see. incredible. Thank you. And then I prepped those last week. I'm getting ready to work on those, but I did the under underpaintings there. And do you do you have a system piece. as to in your in your head um, when you see a blank canvas? Do you have an idea where you're going, or you're just going for it? Like on this one that we're looking at right now. So this one, I literally, my, my process is very, very um, intuitive um, driven. And so I don't always go into a blank piece knowing what's going to come out. Um, or sometimes I'll have a very fleeting idea of something that I want to try or I'll see an image 
Mm -hmm. um, and I'll see it deconstructed um, in my mind. And I'll want to try to replicate that like on the canvas. Um, this piece, I've been wanting to work with um, different materials and with dried paint skin. So this is really my first big um, uh, step in that direction. Um, I'm really working on this piece um, just a little bit at a time, um, adding uh, new skins to it. Um, trying you know what I what placements. I see here, Addy B, is like a lot of little thoughts, um, mm -hmm. and they're represented, and they're going to be one big idea. But for right now, they look, you know, that they just have a lot of small communities happening in the same place, but not. Yeah, and um, and you're going to connect them somehow. So I really enjoy yeah. this. Thank you. Yeah. So I, um, and what actually kind of encouraged me to start um, exploring this um, is Howardina Pendel. She uses a lot of um, tiny punched out um, dots. Um, she, she'll she hole punch thousands of dots and then she'll put thousands. them on the canvas. <laughs> yeah. And she'll stitch them together and glue them. And um, so I wanted to see if how how that what that would look like for my own work and for my own process and practice um and i really love the feel of dried paint so yeah. um and i also want i want to cr also create some pieces that people can touch so this is also another way for me to um try to give that experience to people so it's all exploration interaction all kind of figuring out yeah 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 how to bring all that together i love um it. let's see oh and then i have this here like this is one piece that all kind of like just stuck together and i liked it that way so i left it um not sure what i'm gonna do with it yet more rolled up canvas <laughs> um and then we've got this big piece here this is the latest large piece that i've done wow um Wow. And I'm I love the contrast of the values that you're having there. You actually, it's so funny because usually, um, well, you have the, the dark value on the bottom of it and very, very light mm -hmm. almost on the top. So you can breathe um, really well on this painting. It's Thank very you. well balanced. Yeah. And it's funny because I originally, when I put this, when I stretched this up on the wall, uh, when it was blank, I originally was going to um, paint the whole underpainting black. And I got to about halfway, as you yeah. can see. Yeah. And, um, you know, then intuition was like, nope, we're going to go this way. And so it just went. <laughs> it almost feels like different. you're holding your breath like it's the middle of your stomach, right in the middle mm. of it. And then you start to breathe. And as you're starting to breathe, the painting starts to spread out. And so that's mm -hmm. what I'm looking at, you know, that maybe your stomach was in a knot and then finding a way to breathe through it. I really, really like this a lot. Thank you. I like that. Um, I like, I, I can see that, that explanation. That makes sense to me. Um, but yeah, I literally just changed direction while I was, and it's because an, I've had this idea in my head for another painting that has a black underpainting and I thought that's the one I was going to I thought that's what this was going to become but it had yeah. other yeah. ideas so yeah <laughs> but for me this out. year it's all about breathing breathing through the moment mm -hmm. and and this piece just really you know I feel for myself it's doing that I feel the you know the just the pain and the disbelief but at the same time the hope and the freedom and the you know, the air brushing through. So I, I really think it's a very, very well done piece. Thank you. But yeah, so there's that piece. And let's see, what do we have? Oh, and then this, this is the piece that people can buy. Woo, um, I had actually so posted exciting. on my Instagram <laughs> yesterday. Oh, yeah, I didn't see so it. Is, I'll, I'll repost this, but I'll, I'll show it you guys. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about this? Sure. So I'm, I don't usually work this small. Um, but I had a client who wanted um, two small 12 by 12 pieces. And so when I bought the can when I bought um, 
those pieces, I bought uh, like five or six 12 by 12s. Um, and cause you know, you just never know, like some might work, some might not. Right. So I just wanted to exactly. have extra just in case. Um, and so this was part, as I was painting the other two, I worked on the other four and this is one of those four. Um, and I wanted to kind of, uh, evoke the, um, you know, just what the, the impact the lunar cycle can have in our emotions, um, and then, you know, of course, uh, on weather, right, like in nature, um, the lunar cycle has an impact, but then also emotionally and mentally on us, it also has one as well, I believe. So I wanted to um, explore that um, in this piece. Oh, I love so it. So it was very, well, thank you. Oh my God. If you guys want to buy this piece today for $250, 100% um, of the proceeds will go to Feeding America. So if you're interested in buying this piece from Addie B, either DM me or her, and we'll give you details on how to do it. But um, you would be helping 2,500 meals uh, by buying this incredible artwork by Addie B. So please help us. Um, you know, continue to help others, our community at large, and people who really, really need food. Um, I will never get tired of saying that we need to help people mm -hmm. more than ever. One in four of your neighbors is um, in need of food. So mm -hmm. more than ever, if you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself, and get this incredible artwork in return, uh, please, please buy it today for $250. Yay. I'm super happy about this. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah. And now we're going to move uh, to a little demo that Addie B is going yeah. to show us. So I'm super excited about yeah. this. Yes. Very excited. Um, <laughs> let's move some things around really quick. Okay. Sounds good. Get, try to get couple of things set up here so I can put the phone up and it won't um, and you guys can still see that's um, great thank you for doing this I'm very excited what do you like um yeah. do you have a favorite kind of acrylics um that you like or you just don't care and whatever you find or what do you think? um so I will say I mean I am a golden girl mm -hmm. um <laughs> I love goldens <laughs> um they're probably my primary Okay. Um, that I like to use. Um, I also like using Blix line. Yes. Of paints, um, especially like I like using like their little small um, liquid colors, especially fluid. like when I'm doing yeah. smaller studies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and oil. You do have your oil sticks. <laughs> I do. I haven't used them though because I'm so intimidated by them. Oh but no no! They're... Use them at the end. They are amazing and they bring out like such saturation of color at the end. It's amazing. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to dive in. They're they're here for they're here for encouragement. They're here for me to <laughs> Let me know when you when you do it. To... Let me know. <laughs> I I will. <laughs> I will. Um yeah, I yeah. Oil is aspirational for me. Um but I do also have like I love paint markers. So I have a bunch of Posca yeah, paint I love pens. Posca. I like yep. using these. Yeah, um, I have some soft pastels. Um, and I mean, I also like Liquitex. Um, and oh, and I will say I just started using this brand. Oh, I, <laughs> I love that brand. You know, I yeah, found it. I, I I found it by I don't know how I did, but um, the consistency or of the paint is very um, very the, good, very good, and it doesn't lose its uh, value and the it, saturation. It's great, it and it's very creamy. It's very creamy, and so like yeah. I like I like mixing. I like layering with it. I like kind of yeah. So. I really love this brand. Yeah. Um, I just have you tried it. Nova? Nova is very similar no, to that. I no, I'll send I you haven't. that. I'll send you okay. that. Okay. Nova paints. Oh my God. It's amazing. And they are um, very accessible in pricing and uh, they are incredible paints. Awesome. All right. Yeah. So let me see if I can set you, set you guys up so that you can see. 
Yep, um, we can see you perfect. Okay, perfect. I'm going to be working on this larger piece here. Is um, that, um, what size is that, 36 by 36? This is a 40 by 40. Okay. Yeah, it's a 40 by 40. I have a, um, I have a show coming up in the spring. Um, and so I'm in the process of creating work for that show. Um, where, and, where, is the, just, where is the show going to be? Um, it's going to be with Susan Ely Fine Art in New York City. Nice. Um, it's going to be a show. Yeah. So, but, the, but the, the catch is I have to work small. So <laughs> um, I'm working. <laughs> and 40 have, by like, 40 is not that small. It's not, but like, so they were like, the biggest you can go is maybe like one or two 40 by 40s, but then try to like make some some smaller ones. So I have a bunch of, that's why I also have like these. Um, I have like 20 by 20s. Um, so the key is to just try to see what works. Exactly. Try out different, different things. Um, but all right. So I think what I'm first going to do is... I'm just going to start with some with some charcoal or graphite to start activating the canvas. Yeah, just to kind of work out any nerves. That I have. <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm so happy that you're doing this. It's not easy, guys, to know <laughs> that, you know, someone is watching you while you're painting. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Um, but but it is, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, whoops, wrong one. And it's also just kind of freeing to know that like all of this could get covered up and you would never know. up and you would never know that it's there right but it's part it's of the history of the painting get my wrists and hands loose which is important because i have ra so i have arthritis and you're using both hands which is important yeah which is very very important very helpful I love the sound. It's like we yeah. have special effects. <laughs> so, so literally right now, you're just like starting it and then you're going to react to it, correct? Um, yeah, so I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna kind of go with the flow. I'll probably what I tend to do if I start with this type of a base. Um, I like to do some other line work, but with paint. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna see what I want to start with here. I think I want to start with with this. So I'm going to What color are you using? Um, so I'm going to be using actually this one. Anthraquinone blue is my favorite shade of blue. Uh, and, and I, you will see it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fluid. You'll see it in my work all the time. That's somewhere. I use it constantly. Um, so I'm just going to put some down here. Grab my brush. And so you're using no water right now you're just literally going through the paint yeah. and then starting to paint on it with no water yeah with no water just kind of because you know i don't know like what lines i want to keep What'll stay? I'll grab my spray bottle because I like to do a lot of drips. So I'll kind of just start with that. Um, 
It's incredible what a little water to that fluid uh, paint does. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, especially when it's when it's when it's fluid paint like this. Yeah. It just it's just so to work with. So let's see. Do your kids ever come in with you and paint with you or or not really? Um, not, not as much anymore. When my youngest was like two and three, um, I would be working in the studio and then suddenly I would look and I would see him in the corner painting whatever, <laughs> <laughs> the corner of whatever I was working on. I love um, that. Yeah, but they, they don't, they don't come in as much anymore, but that's okay. Yes. Yeah. That's they okay. know that they mom. have you. Yeah, they have they have mom as an artist. Right. And they know too that I kind of just like to have my own time in here. <laughs> yeah, so, it's important um, to find that it's like your own little sacred time in your studio. Most definitely. And then, you know, I, I'm, I'm a painter who um, I just like to mix a bunch of stuff. So like, I'm not even going to change the brush. I'm just gonna you know, just dabble it into the new color, um, which is some burnt sienna. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna see maybe how that works. And I just, you know, I'll blend on the canvas as opposed to um, on a palette. Yeah, I love doing that as well. Except sometimes I run out of that color and then I'm in trouble. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. <laughs> um, but I just kind of like mixing and blending and seeing what comes up. I love the mark making and I love that, you know, you're just going for it and, you know, you're going through your gut feeling and not really thinking too much about it because that will come after. That will come after when you're ready to finish the painting. But right now it's just yeah, going I'm, for it. Yeah, I mean, I also find too that when, I, when I'm working intuitively like this, um, you know, the, the painting will kind of tell me much later what, what it is that I've been processing or what, you know, it tells me the story. It tells me what my thoughts are. It's, it's really my, it's really my subconscious talking back to me. Exactly. Um, and you're since, responding to it, which is a very yeah. cool way of, you know, we always say like, we want to find the inner child of ourselves, especially when you're starting a painting and uh, because right. it's the most honest time when we start a painting I right think. exactly so I just let it I like to just let it um and also too I just I just like to move I just you know um I had a therapist two years ago tell me that um when you're when you've experienced a lot of trauma in your life that trauma has to find a way to move or else it'll just live in your body. And so um, painting for me is a way for all of the stuff that I've experienced to move into something and to, you know, be channeled out of my body. And so that it's not um, making my body turn in on itself. And what I have um, found is what I call the dancing with your canvas. So you're, it's a motion that you're going in and out, in and out. And it's yeah. that movement that you're talking about. It's important. I call it my dance. I like moving in and out. And, um, you know, when I paint, I listen to music, I dance. And uh, it's just this whole, like, thing that I do. And you just have to find your what works for you to get into the groove um, so you don't lose it while you have it. Right, exactly. So I, I just pulled up, um, I am terrible with brushes, um, which is why I have to buy cheap chip brushes. Um, Cause I'll just leave them and then forget that they need to like be cleaned or, 
Um, so I just picked up this really, but I also sometimes really prefer working with a very dry, stiff, messed up brush. Okay. Um, so this one was four, so I just picked it up just now, and I've got um, some Titan Mars Pale, which is a oh, color I love that, that I love. Me too. And it's a he it's heavy body, so it's thicker. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start working with it. And the thing that I love about really stiff brushes is just the way the the line work the bristles can create. Yeah. Um. So. I like messing up brushes and then using them again. I love adding the, the um, lighter values into the painting because it's like almost starting to edit some of the things that you did. And so I, I love right. having that, you know, that, um, for sure. So, wow, look at that. Okay, well, thank you so much for mm -hmm. showing us a little bit of your process and a little bit of, um, of everything that you do and how important it is, even if you have a small space, look at how you have been able to use every square inch of your space. It's amazing. <laughs> like, there's no <laughs> excuse when they say like, people say like, well, I don't have space. Well, you can yeah. make space, right? That's not an excuse. I, yeah, I've made space in my living rooms before. I've made space in my bedroom. And now, you know, I have this whole room and I, I definitely take up every every ounce, <laughs> every square foot yes. that I can. Yes, yes. Every well, before we go, can you show us again the painting that will be for sale today? I'm going to actually turn back yeah. on the comments. If you have any... Um, questions for Addie B. This will be the time. But if anyone is interested in purchasing this today uh, for $250, please DM me or Addie B for, um, for more details. But um, you will be helping so many people in need. Just remember that, that by purchasing this artwork today, you will be helping 2,500 meals. So this is incredible. Um, it's... Um, it's been an honor to meet you, Addie B. And um, if you thank can you switch, so much there for we having go. me, this was awesome. Yes, this was amazing, <laughs> this and was awesome. um, I found a new friend and a new colleague, and I can't wait to you know continue this relationship with you. And you're just a bright Most star. Definitely. So thank you so much for you having me. So much success. And um, seriously, thank yeah. you for coming in and being part of this army of artists. Thank you for gathering us all together. I love this. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Take you care. Too. And please DM me or Addie B for details on purchasing this incredible artwork. Take care, everybody. Ooh, I can't even Bye. talk. Take care, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.